Hello everyone and welcome to the arsenal of Black Hat Asia 2021. Today we're here to talk about Kicks. We're going to talk about the open source tool itself and about how to keep your infrastructure as code secure. Um, by the end of this session, you will know the tool, you will know the problems that it's going to solve for you, and you're going to see how easy it's going to make your life. So let's start. My name is Erez. I'm the head of security research at Checkmarks, and with me here is uh, Ori, uh, director of uh, uh, product management also in Checkmarks. And we see a lot of mistakes being done out there on a daily basis. And when technology advances, also the security needs to follow. Sometimes it lags, but we must make sure that the gap is closed as quickly as possible. So our short journey begins with understanding what cloud native applications are. And for that, um, I usually like to go to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. They have a very good definition of cloud native, obviously. And when talking about cloud native, we talk about a number of technologies. These technologies are here to help us build and run scalable applications. And it includes many, many things that we see as, uh, as buzzwords these days, but no longer buzzwords now because we actually use them. Um, I'm talking about containers and service meshes, uh, microservices, um, everything about API and API security in general, and so on. So when we talk about cloud native applications, what we actually mean is a, a collection of small independent and loosely coupled services. All of them are designed to deliver well-recognized business value and in general, um, they are specifically designed to provide a consistent development and uh, automated management experience across private, public, and hybrid clouds. If it sounds very familiar to what you're doing lately, then you're right, because these are the building blocks of modern applications. So when we talk about cloud native applications, we sometimes mean just modern applications, and this is where the future is, and this is actually where we are now. So let's take a, a very quick look about the differences between traditional and cloud native applications. So unlike traditional applications, we see that uh, in cloud native systems, the code is obviously no longer a very big monolith, which is surrounded by other things that just supposed to make it work. In cloud native system, the, the application code is only one of the building blocks um, of the entire system. And around it, we see many, many different uh, components that are part of the application. Um, we see that cloud applications are managing everything as code now. Um, not only the application is code, obviously, but also configurations and every, everything around the infrastructure, and the provisioning pro processes, and uh, et cetera. So what we see is a shift from the traditional security ownership that used to be divided between, um, let's say, R&D or developers when they had to take care of the security of their code and IT professionals and later in the process, DevOps professionals uh, looking at infrastructure security. Now, these are uh, these areas are not so divided anymore. We see a joint security ownership, um, which kind of builds the entire uh, DevSecOps movement. So, what is this infrastructure as code that we're talking about? Infrastructure as code um, is the process of managing and provisioning software through machine-readable definition files. Uh, we see that we're no longer using um, hardware or physical hardware configurations or interactive uh, configuration tools. What we have is uh, an automatic way of creating files, configuration files, um, which makes everything um, much quicker, much scalable. It reduces the cost and, and the resources that are needed to manage these large infrastructures. 
um, everything becomes more elastic and no more inconsistencies. You create these, uh, these files of, uh, of configuration once and you can deploy them or provision them as many times as you want. If we look at the, let's say, typical cloud architecture, we can see there are a lot of components in it. Um, this is obviously just an example. Um, some architectures are much more complicated than that. Each part and each component or each building block of this architecture can be used um, or can be configured by uh, infrastructure as code or configuration files. As we mentioned, um, many of them can be configured by single files or separate files. And we know that uh, if we have a lot of options and a lot of areas to make mistakes, mistakes will happen. Let's move to the security part of infrastructure as code. So infrastructure as code security is a real concern. It's a real thing. Uh, according to a, a Palo Alto Unit 42 cloud threat report from 2020, they took a look at uh, 200,000 um, different uh, um, infrastructure as code files. And the numbers are pretty amazing. They found that 42% of CloudFormation templates, for example, contain at least one insecure configuration. This is a huge number. Also, they saw that 48% of AWS uh, S3 buckets don't even have server-side encryption enabled. And 55% of cloud user configured um, S3 buckets do not have logging enabled. These numbers are enough to, to keep many people uh, awake at night, and we see that the pain is real here. Um, it's important to say that these misconfigurations are sometimes just the difference between true or false in the configuration file. Sometimes it's it, a port number instead of, a, instead of an asterisk. And this is something that um, is amazing in the numbers, but to be honest, we were not so surprised because these are the things that we see every day. For example, we see uh, uh, services that are running with the highest privileges, uh, root privileges. Obviously, this is not the way things should be. Um, once a service is compromised, um, an entire cluster might be compromised. Um, another example is the exposure of unneeded resources like SSH ports. This port is, uh, these days at least, used mainly for debugging. Um, it should not be exposed in production environment at all. We see a lot of hard-coded secrets. We see tokens and encryption keys and passwords and whatnot. I think that um, we know that this is a very bad practice to keep them in your files. And also we see the use of HTTP and HTTPS uh, on external load balancers um, when HTTP does not necessarily redirect to HTTPS. Um, this is something that can often lead to, to sensitive data, authorization tokens, leakage, um, and many more. These are just some examples. So um, now that we understand the problem, I will let Ori take it from here and walk us through the solution. Thanks, Seves. And with that, I'm happy to introduce you to Kix. Kix stands for Keeping Infrastructure as Code Secure. It is an open source project which scans and finds misconfiguration and potential vulnerabilities in infrastructure code. So just like SaaS that scans application source codes and finds vulnerabilities, Kix scans infrastructure codes and finds misconfiguration and vulnerabilities in infrastructure code. Kix supports the top infrastructure as code providers, including AWS CloudFormation, Ansible, Kubernetes, Terraform, Docker, and Helm, and with much more to come. In Kix, we kept the queries concept, and Kix comes with 12 different categories for infrastructure, including access control, encryption, network and firewall, secret management, and others. Overall, we have over 1,300 different queries, making it the most in the market among infrastructure as code scanning tools. Let's talk a bit on what does it mean to have a vulnerability or a misconfiguration in infrastructure. So we are all well aware of what is cross-site scripting or what is SQL injection in our application, but let's talk for one minute on what does it mean to have it 
um, in your infrastructure code. So what we have here, this is a very simple Terraform for Google Cloud Platform example that defines a security uh, group for a resource. And in this case, what we see is that port 20, which is mostly used for SSH for debugging, is being left open, which increases the possibility of having an additional attack surface. As we know that there are bots that scan the, uh, the, those ports and finding open ports. And in case they, uh, they find an open port, they simply brute force on the password. And by that, they can gain um, uh, remote access on the server. So what will happen is once we scan um, this Terraform file with kicks, it will find this uh, open port and uh, suggest that you need uh, to close it as well. So let's talk a bit on how you can uh, integrate and where you can use kicks in your uh, flow. So you can have it defined for each developer to run locally. They can fetch the Docker image, the Docker container from Docker Hub and run it locally before pushing their infrastructure code. You can integrate it with your uh, repository uh, making sure that it runs on every uh, pull request or on every uh, merge to master or whatever you define. You can have it as part of the pipeline and we will see it in the demo in a couple of minutes. And you can also have it set as a security check, making sure that once you move for testing to staging to production, you are also testing your infrastructure as code. So now let's see it live. Okay, so now I will stop sharing the presentation. And the first thing I want to show you is the Kix website. So we have the Kix.io. This is the website for the project. We keep it as a separate brand powered by check marks. And here you can find everything that you need in order to get started with Kix. You can see all the supported platforms that we just discussed, the different uh, aspects and uh, how it can help you. And most importantly, a link to the live documentation. The documentation is being updated on every build. And what we will do now is simply go to the getting started guide and understand how easy it is to have kicks up and running. In the first section of the demo, I will show you the two steps that you need in order to have it up and running by using the Docker uh, image from Docker Hub. So the first command, the first step that you need to run is fetching the Docker image, the latest one from Docker Hub. We publish a new release for Kicks every two weeks. So we do recommend that you always use the most updated one. And then all you need to do is uh, trigger the command to start the scan where the parameters is the link or the path to the infrastructure's code files that you want to scan, the Kicks version, the path to the queries. By default, we will scan with the entire queries uh, that Kicks has and the output to the results in this case, uh, you will output a uh, results JSON. We also support Sarif and HTML and more formats to come. So now let's quickly see it live. I will quickly open the terminal. There we go. Let's give it some zoom. And now let's simply paste the first command, if I have it updated already, it should tell me that. And let's see. OK, I see that we have a new version, which is great. So now we will fetch it from Docker Hub. And once we have it updated, then it is uh, updated to the latest version. Now I've already prepared uh, the command, so I won't need to type anything, where in this case I'm scanning a simple Terraform file uh, on AWS. I am running Kix version 1.2.3. And once it is started, we will see uh, the scan progress and then uh, we will get the results. So now the scan is executing and at the end we get the summary. So in this case, the Terraform file that I scan had seven different issues. And now I can go and look at the results JSON. So first of all, what we have is the fact that we provide some metadata on the scan itself. So in this case, we scanned two files. Two files were passed successfully. A total of 1,343 queries were executed. And here I can see the list of findings uh, that Kicks found. In this case, I can see that we have one query that is HTTP port open. It has a high severity. The platform is Terraform. I can see the reference to 
where we based uh, this query on, and then some initial uh, guidance on how to remediate or where to start the investigation. So I can see that the file is original.terraform. It happened in line two. The issue type is incorrect value, and we also provide the expected versus actual value. So expected value is port 80 that was left and uh, that shouldn't be open, but in actual, uh, what kicks found the fact that uh, port 80 was left open, and now I need to go and uh, to fix the issue and then scan kicks again. So this was the first part of having kicks using two very simple commands. One is to fetch the Docker from Docker Hub, and the second one is to simply execute kicks, and you can have your infrastructure uh, findings in uh, less than two minutes. The next thing I want to show you is how easy it is to configure it as part of your uh, pipeline. In this case, I will show you uh, how to configure kicks with GitLab. So what we have here, this is again a Terraform uh, infrastructure is called repository that deployed uh, a bunch of uh, resources and infrastructure on AWS. If I will just open one of them so you can see this is a, a real example um, from one of the products uh, that we have, obviously anonymized and uh, changed for the sake of this demo. And what we will do is, first of all, uh, I will show you how to configure it as part of a pipeline. So in this case, we are using the Linux command line we have beside the Docker, uh, the Docker image, we have command lines for all platforms, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. In this case, we will use the Linux version. And then the command is very similar to what we just ran with the Docker example, where in this case, the only difference is the fact that based on the policy that we defined, we did some manipulation of the results JSON. And in case uh, kicks found, any high vulnerabilities, then the pipeline will fail. And we have in the documentation other steps on how to configure um, other CI CD servers, whether it's GitHub Actions um, and um, Azure DevOps and the other ones. So you can see them here um, as well. So now what I will do is I will go and will trigger a new pipeline and let's see what is the results. So I'm now triggering a pipeline. Overall, compared to a regular SAS scan, infrastructure scanning or a kick scan is running much faster. And as you can see here from our previous examples, it usually runs for a one minute and 20 something seconds. And just in order to save us the one minute, I will simply show you the previous run, where in this case, the kick scan, the scan itself passed successfully, but we had some issues in the results. So now I can see that overall we found nine high uh, issues, no lows, 10, uh, sorry, no mediums, 10 lows and three info. And based on the policy that we defined it, you can define the policy according to uh, whatever you want. Uh, we need to find, uh, we need to fix all the nine uh, high severity and then the pipeline will succeed. So this is the way you can configure it. Uh, you can configure kicks as part of your pipeline. And as I mentioned, and as I showed you, we also have steps for the rest of the uh, CI CD servers. So this concludes uh, the, the demo part. In the first one, we had Docker, uh, being, uh, we fetched the Docker image from Docker Hub, two very simple steps and you have it up and running, less than two minutes and you can get results. And the second one is how to configure it as part of your pipeline. In this example, we showed it as part of a GitLab pipeline. Okay, so now let's talk a bit on, on, on the kicks advantages as we see that obviously there are all, already a bunch of infrastructures called uh, scanning uh, open source projects uh, that exist are there. So first of all, kicks has the largest infrastructure called query coverage. Uh, we have over 1300 different queries and we are running very fast supporting the top infrastructure is called uh, tools and we will add more as well. It is easily extensible. We are using OPA, the open policy agent, 
and the queries themselves is written in Rego, making sure that if you want to extend, if you want to run your own custom queries, those uh, are easily uh, achievable. And we also have a guide on how to get started with your own queries. If you think that it's suitable for the rest of the community, please open a pull request and contribute it back. If not, you can uh, continue to use them as your own private custom queries uh, for your uh, infrastructure needs. Uh, we, it also comes with a remediation guidance. So every query comes with an actual versus an expected, uh, allowing developers uh, to better understand how to start uh, the fix and how to remediate. And the robust and simple architectures allows us as checkmarks and the, the rest of the community uh, to add new support for infrastructure as code solution. As a result, we were able to add support for Helm in less than uh, two weeks. Everything that you need to know about Kicks. So first of all, we have our public GitHub repository under the main checkmarks uh, account. Uh, give it a try, take a look. If you like something, let us know. If something is missing, please open a feature request or start a discussion on a uh, Gitter. If you liked it, please give us a star. It will really uh, be appreciated by the team. You already saw the public website, ticks.io. Everything is there. Um, the entire project is completely uh, managed from GitHub. So you can see there our roadmap, what we support, the list of um, tools that we are running to verify um, that Kix is uh, working according to the standards that we want it to have. And also, you can start a discussion with us uh, on Gitter. If something is not working, if something is not clear, we don't understand one of or uh, any other parameter when running Kix please start a discussion there and one of uh, the team will help you in a matter of uh, minutes, I believe up to uh, a couple of hours, um, you will get the answer. Beside that, what is coming um, next for Kicks? So first of all, regarding coverage, so we already uh, added support for Helm. This was uh, requested by uh, plenty of people in the, um, in the community. We are now extending to APIs schemas and I will elaborate more in the next slide. Uh, the, the next coverage is to make sure that we complete the entire infrastructure as code tools, including Azure Resource Manager and Google Deployment Manager. It doesn't mean that with the current tools that we support, we don't support Azure or Google as the cloud vendor. So if you are using Terraform and deploying on Azure or on Google Cloud, this is already supported, but I'm talking here about the support for the infrastructure as code tools provided by Microsoft and Google. Regarding deployment, so we do want to further ease uh, the ability to consume it. So we will add uh, auto distribution um, platform, Chocolate for Windows and Homebrew for Mac. Uh, we will prove reporting. We got a lot of feedback from uh, the, the users on the reporting. We already added uh, HTML report, PDF is coming next. I mentioned Sarif and also other formats as uh, they come along. And we are uh, investing in providing the steps for uh, CI CDs. So Circle CI, Travis CI uh, are coming next, Jenkins as well. Azure DevOps is already supported and we will continue to invest uh, there as well. So again, if something is missing, let us know. Beside that, what we're going to do now uh, with Kix is having uh, going beyond infrastructure's code and infrastructure configuration and extending to API schemas. So what we want, uh, to do is the, to show or to use Kicks and to leverage Kicks uh, that it will also be able to scan not only your infrastructure as code, but also your API configurations. And we will check for uh, three different uh, parameters. One of them is the uh, open API format requ uh, requirements. The second is data validation, making sure that your API is uh, has the proper validation and also security aspects, whether it's authentication, authorization, and the rest of them. So this is coming very, uh, very soon uh, with Kix. So I do encourage you uh, to take a look and uh, to check. Uh, and just to summarize, so Kix, keeping infrastructure as code as secure, open source powered by check marks. We have a team that is dedicated to making sure that this will continue to grow together with the community. We support uh, the top infrastructure as code tools um, AWS CloudFormation, Ansible, Kubernetes, Terraform, Docker, Helm, and coming next is APIs, schemas, Azure Resource Manager, and Google Deployment Manager, and some um, other um, um, very nice improvements as well. 
it scans and finds misconfiguration and potential vulnerabilities in infrastructure code. And if you liked it, give it a try um, on kicks.io. Let us know what you think. Uh, we are more uh, uh, than encourage you to give us the feedback, whether it's on GitHub, Gitter, or uh, through uh, the email that we have. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much. And if you have any questions, we are happy to take them and to answer them. Thank you.